Should the Baltimore Ravens be looking to add Dalvin Cook? We talk about that and so much more coming up next here on Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostrecker of Ravens Wire. We're here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for being here with us today on this Monday, starting off a new week and making us your first listen each and every day. We're free and available all podcasting platforms, including over in video form on YouTube. So be sure to subscribe to the show, both in audio and video form. It is free. Both ways, and today's episode of Locked On Ravens is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And we are back here. Another week of Ravens content as we continue again to cross off check marks to the 2023 season. You know, going through voluntary OTAs, now mandatory mini camp coming up, training camp, the preseason. We'll be there before we know it. And here on Locked On Ravens, we strive to give you the best five days a week of Ravens content we can here as we give you news, analysis, updates on the show. If you're an everyday or you've been here for a long time, thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, this is your first time. Thank you as well for tuning in. If you're somewhere in the middle, we don't forget about you as well. Thank you for being here with us today. And we have a lot to get into. As again, I called this the low period of the offseason. Those who are everydayers know that. I continue to call it that. But there's never really, and this offseason hasn't been one, where there has been a low period for the Ravens. Instead, we're going to be talking about Dalvin Cook a little bit, almost the running back position a tiny bit. We'll talk about Dalvin Cook first. We talked about it briefly on Friday's show with Kadri Ismael, but just if the Ravens should be looking to pursue Dalvin Cook, why it would or wouldn't make sense in this circumstance. Then we'll move in and uh, talk more about running backs in the second part of the show, Dobbins versus Edwards. You know, what will J.K. Dobbins' role look like this year? What will Gus Edwards' role look like this year? We'll talk about both those guys in the second part. Then finally, we'll look at the state of the Ravens' defensive line room. It's a need that I've been talking about for a little bit here. They lose Clayus Campbell. We'll talk about how comfortable the Ravens should be with that room right now. So let's first get into Dalvin Cook. We'll start off with that. Now, for those who don't know Dalvin Cook, the Vikings tried to trade him. There have been rumblings for a while that, you know, he was going to get released and and there wasn't going to be a future there between those two parties. Nothing ended up coming for the Vikings in terms of package they liked. The teams, you know, weren't really offering a ton. We know the running back position right now is just in a really bad spot. So the Vikings end up releasing Dalvin Cook. And there have been a couple of updates in terms of what the potential sweepstakes could look like. Teams like the Broncos and the Dolphins and a couple others are the, I guess, preliminary suitors right now. But, you know, it kind of raises the question, as does, you know, when any free agent gets, you know, put out there on the market, especially one like Cook. Should the Ravens be looking to add a Dalvin Cook? Should they Should they be trying to cook with Dalvin Cook right now? The short answer is no, but don't don't click off yet. Don't don't stop listening yet because I do have a reason why it would make sense. But to me, overall, the the overarching answer is no. Now there are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, one of the updates provided from Tom Pelissero is that former Vikings running back Dalvin Cook is looking for a significant contract in free agency. He won't sign a four to $5 million type contract. Now that to me puts a, it puts a damper on a lot of things here. I don't, I don't think the Ravens have, you know, a, a ton of room, especially if they want to continue to add to the roster outside of a cook move, if that's what they wanted to do, that they can't afford to pay Dalvin cook starter money. And in fact, I don't think they should pay Dalvin cook starter money. Not, not that Dalvin cook isn't a starter. He absolutely is. I, I think that wherever he goes, he should be a starter, But in Baltimore, we'll talk about J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards in the second part of the show. You already have two guys there who honestly deserve to be starters. And one of them isn't going to be this year because, you know, we can only have one guy as the quote unquote starter. And I know the the role starter, we've talked about this before on the show. If you're on every day, you you might have caught me talking about this a little bit. The the actual term starter, like, you know, the, the honor of being a starter is starting to matter less and less because guys get on the field anyway. But to me, a bigger need for the Ravens is edge. We talked about the Neil Hunter on Friday's show. 
a bigger need for the Ravens is cornerback. If if Dalvin Cook's looking for eight million a year, ten million a year, Baltimore has ten ish, eleven ish million dollars in cap space right now. Dalvin Cook, you look great. You know, you add him to a room, it becomes a luxury. But this is again, it's like DeAndre Hopkins, where it, it's a luxury situation. And it, honestly, it has some similarities. Like it actually has a couple similarities to the Hopkins potential signing in Baltimore. Where look, still a re- Cook is a really good running back. DeAndre Hopkins is still a really good receiver. But one, it would be taking away from some of your younger guys. You know, not that that should be the reason why you don't sign a guy. I think anytime you can make a move to improve your team, no matter where it is, you do it. Adding, adding Dalvin Cook would improve the Ravens' running back room one hundred percent. But you know, for guys in the wide receiver room, for example, like Rashad Bateman and Zay Flowers, you know, what would signing DeAndre Hopkins do for them? What would it do for their workload? It's the same thing with a player like Dalvin Cook for J.K. Dobbins. Got said it was to a lesser extent because he's not necessarily young, young anymore. It's kind of weird to say for you know a, a guy in Gus Edwards who is still not not in his thirties yet. He's twenty eight years old, but at the same time, I think for Dalvin Cook and just the way that the Ravens have shifted, like I think. It would have made more sense for the Ravens to make this move under Greg Roman. Not that it wouldn't under Todd Munkin. I think that a, a common misconception about Baltimore's offense this year is that they're they're going to be a bottom 10 team rushing the football. They're fully committing to throwing the football. And in turn, they're not going to run it at all. That, that to me, it's, it's not that's not going to happen. They're still going to have a emphasis on the running game. They're still going to run it a lot. Just not as much, you know? I think adding Dalvin Cook, I I just don't see where the fit is to me right now. I I think Dalvin Cook's one heck of a player. Don't get me wrong. He's a guy who has proven himself over the course of his career. He's 27 years old right now, you know, came in the league in 2017. And right now, you know, again, missed most of his rookie season. Only had 354 yards his rookie year, 615 his second season, but has had four straight 1,000 yard seasons and put up, you know, 16 touchdowns in 2020, 13 touchdowns in 2019 injuries here and there, I think have contributed to a lot for Dalvin cook. I mean, he played a full 17 games last year, but before that had never played a full 17 games. So durability is another thing for him, but putting up 1,282 carries almost 6,000 yards, 5,993 in, in, you know, 47 touchdowns. That, that's no small feat. Also had 224, 221 receptions, 1,794 yards, and five touchdowns there. Good player, I think, could contribute to the Ravens in multiple different ways. But to me, it would just make sense for the Ravens right now. They re-signed Justice Hill to a two-year, two-year deal. And look, I'm not, I'm not saying Justice Hill should be the guy that stops the Ravens from signing a Dalvin Cook. But if you roll into the year right now with, with J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, you have a guy like Keaton Mitchell, for example, who can either be the fourth running back on the roster or the practice squad guy, for example, I think that is completely okay. And then you can use the money that you would have signed Dalvin Cook with to go out there and get a Daniil Hunter in a trade. You can sign Justin Houston with that and Marcus Peters or Yannick Ngakwe and Marcus Peters. Go, go out there, get a slot corner, for example. I just think the way that the Ravens are positioned right now, look, money to them, I think they, they have enough restructure avenues. Who, who knows if they want to do it or not? but they have enough restructure avenues to make a move like Dalvin cook and then restructure guys and make it work that way. But I think with them, you know, expressing confidence in JK Dobbins, expressing confidence in Gus Edwards and them moving away. I shouldn't say moving away. I should say them moving more towards a throw heavy offense. Not that they're going to abandon the run again. They're not going to do that. I just think at this point for the Ravens, Dalvin Cook doesn't make as much sense as maybe it would have. A three-headed monster of Dalvin Cook, J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards would be among the best, if not the best, running back group in the league, 1,000%. But to me, I I just think there are bigger needs elsewhere. To me, it it honestly would make more sense if they signed DeAndre Hopkins at this point. Injuries happen. There's no guarantee J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards stay healthy. That's a reason to me why I think it would make sense. You never want to have... So little, I shouldn't say so little because the Ravens have the depth there, but you never want to pass up an opportunity to add quality depth in case of, look, literally what we saw two years ago in 2021, where the whole running back room, literally the whole running back room was wiped out due to injury before the 2021 season even started. That situation where the Ravens would have loved to have Delvin Cook in that situation. Obviously, it was now two years ago, but that's a reason why I think the Ravens could potentially look at it because I think there would be enough for the ball to go around. I'm not sure everyone would be happy. You know, I I don't know how happy J.K. Dobbins would be if Dalvin Cook cut into his workload. 
but I think there would be, you know, if, if everybody bought in, you know, if there was a buy in, I think there would be enough. I, I just think it doesn't make total sense at this point for the Ravens to add Dalvin Cook. So should they look into it? I think, look, you can kick the tires. You can figure out what, what the price range is for Cook, what he's looking for in an organization. But to me, uh, unless Cook is able to come down on his reported asking price and, and, you know, buy into a lesser role on a team, and who knows if he's able to do that or not, I, I would probably say it's a pass for me for Baltimore. But coming up in the second part of the show, I'll be talking a bit about who the Ravens have on the roster right now, looking at J.K. Dobbins versus Gus Edwards, how those two guys could be utilized this year, because it might be a bit different than what we've seen over the past couple of seasons. So be sure to stay tuned. A lot to get to on the show. But first, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. And make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs, because right now new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. And we are still in NBA Finals mode, me being a huge Denver Nuggets guy. Tonight's a big night on Monday night. They could close out the NBA Finals against the Heat, win the championship. Hopefully they do it. They have not won four games yet, only three if you're looking to – Maybe bet on finals MVP. If the Nuggets win tonight, you can do that. Nikola Jokic, Shamal Murray. If you want to bet on the Heat to win the series, come back from 3-1. You can do that over at FanDuel. And you should go over to FanDuel and make those bets because FanDuel has great promotions every day. They have a safe and secure app. You can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action on America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. We are back here, our second segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Ostreicher is still here with you talking Ravens football, talking Ravens running backs, honestly. We talked about Dalvin Cook in that first part of the show. Again, the verdict for me, at least, was wasn't 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 something I was totally interested in at this point. But, you know, maybe if the price is right, and you, you can comment down below if, if you have different thoughts or you agree with me or whatnot. Always up for, for healthy football talk, of course on this show, but I do want to get into who's on the roster for Baltimore right now, because I think for JK Dobbins and Gus Edwards, you know, we can talk about justice Hill and Keaton Mitchell and those guys all we want to, but this is the running back room. At least is the JK Dobbins and Gus Edwards show. Now we've seen, you know, two years of Gus Edwards and JK Dobbins in Baltimore, obviously the 2021 season, I'm not counting because both guys were injured for the whole year. 2022 was weird though. JK Dobbins comes back, gets, you know, has to have the cleanup surgery, comes back again, Gus Edwards comes back later in the year as well. Well, not like super late, but, you know, comes back. The Cleveland game, I think, was the first game he came back and scored two touchdowns, if I'm not mistaken. But to me, I think that this could be a little bit different than what we've seen over the past couple of years, especially 2020 when J.K. Dobbins was a rookie. Look, that year he was incredible. He led all running backs in yards per carry with six. And actually the only guy that he was behind, well, I think he was behind two guys, Kyler Murray and Lamar Jackson in terms of total yards per carry throughout the entire league that year. So to me, JK Dobbins is someone who has, he's proven it over the first two years of his career. I'm again, not counting 2021, but if you do count 2021, he's entering year four. This is a contract year. Gus Edwards is also a guy who's in a contract year right now. So you, you you look at what happens for these two players moving forward. You don't know. Obviously, we saw J.K. Dobbins tweet out a couple of weeks ago that he's uncertain about his future, loves Baltimore. But with the way the Ravens are, again, moving in the direction of this offense, which is, again, not going to be they're just going to abandon the run game completely. That's not what's, what's going to happen. The thing that I've seen, you know, throughout the past couple of months is some people, and look, not everybody, this is, it's a very select, like, oh, I, I see this here and there, but it's, oh, well, you know, the Ravens are all of a sudden, they're going to be a top five team in terms of pass attempts. They're going to all, the, they're going to finally go away from the run game and, you know, be bottom 10 and rush attempts. That's not, that's not what's going to happen. It's just not. The Ravens were too good at running the football. And look, Lamar Jackson said that, you know, running can only take you so far, right? I agree with him in that regard, but it's not like the Ravens are going to stop running the football altogether and just completely phase that out and be a bottom five rushing team in terms of attempts this year. J.K. Dobbins is super talented. Gus Edwards is super talented. But I think this is the year we, we see a shift into this is more of J.K. Dobbins in, in his backfield in terms of, you know, that is opposed to the committee we've seen with, with Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins over the past couple of seasons. 2020, which was J.K. Dobbins' rookie year, Gus Edwards ended up having – 144 carries that year. J.K. Dobbins had 134 carries that year. So literally almost an even split right down the middle. J.K. Dobbins had 805 yards with 
his touches and Gus Edwards had 711. So six yards per carry for Dobbins, five yards per carry, five point. Yeah. Five yards per carry for Edwards. Then in 2022, same thing, JK Dobbins, 92 carries Gus Edwards, 87 carries. So it flipped to where Gus Edwards had the slight advantage in 2020. And then JK Dobbins had the slight advantage in 2022. I think you will see a, a much bigger advantage for JK Dobbins this year. I would expect maybe the numbers to be, I think we're going to see more offensive possessions for the Ravens this year in more sustained possessions. So look, when, when it's called for running the football in certain situations, Todd Muggins is going to do it. There's, there's going to be no forcing. Oh, you know, we have to run the ball here. It's going to be a lot more game flow this year. Lamar Jackson, as we now know, taking over the keys to this offense, he'll be able to check into plays, check out of plays, figure out where the coverages are coming from. Where's the pressure coming from. That's huge for him. But to me, in this backfield, and Lamar Jackson will have carries, definitely not going to be nearly as much as he's had over the first five years of his career. But I think we're going to see a shift here. Some of the, I guess, complaints, you know, we, we've heard some complaints for J.K. Dobbins on the workload, on, you know, when he's gotten the ball in big moments. J.K. Dobbins has only had one game. This is that I've repeated a lot. So if you're an everyday, you've probably heard it. But J.K. Dobbins has had one game over the course of his career, which is, again, two years so far on the field. One game with over 15 carries. It was 17, the last game of the season, last year against Pittsburgh. If you include that game, he has four games with 15 carries or more. He's had three games with 15 carries, one game with 17 carries. To me, you know, this is a guy in J.K. Dobbins who loves to compete, loves to play football. He's a very passionate guy. Like, we know that. On and off the field, very passionate. It's one of the things I really like about him, actually. But he's a guy that I think does deserve more touches. I think he has earned more touches. Now, the thing the Ravens have to balance is they have one heck of a running back in Gus Edwards, too. It's not like they're the carries that Edwards gets, you know, oh, they're so undeserved. And what has he done? What has Gus Edwards done? Well, over the course of his career, he has never averaged below five yards per carry. Never. 5.2 in 2018, 5.3 in 2019, 5 in 2020, in five in 2022 and it's not like he's only having 40 carries a season 137 in 2018 133 in 2019 144 in 2020 87 in 2022 this is a volume player who's proven it over multiple seasons more seasons than, J than jk dobbins has but i think smartly what the ravens should be doing here is giving more carries to Dobbins. Again, I don't know if his workload is ever going to be 20 carries a game with the way this offense is moving right now. But look, if you can get him 15 to 17 carries consistently, or it's not him having 15 one game and then nine and then 11 and then nine again and then 12, if you can get him 15 to 17 consistently and then Gus Edwards may be getting eight to 10 consistently. I think again, with the way Lamar Jackson is going to run less in this offense, moving forward, you have more to work with, with these guys where it's not Lamar getting 10 to 12 carries a game. It's maybe Lamar getting four to five or five to six. So that's not nearly as much. And you can spread those out over Dobbins and Edwards and, you know, maybe give justice Hill a carrier to keep Mitchell regardless but this is now an opportunity for Baltimore to, I think, give Dobbins more of the workload that he has deserved over, over his first three years in the league on the field, while also not necessarily cutting into Gus Edwards and his workload too much. I think it will be a less workload year for Gus Edwards, considering what maybe we were used to in 2020. 2022, again, was so weird with Dobbins coming in and out of the lineup and then Edwards coming back a little later, you know, after week one. So this will be the second full year, assuming both stay healthy. Knock on wood, they do that. But this is an opportunity, I think, for the Ravens to fully unleash the beast in J.K. Dobbins. El Toro, as he calls himself, his nickname. So I'm excited for these two guys personally. I also think part of this is not just going to be running the ball. It's going to be how, how Todd Moe can, can get these guys involved passing the football. 2021, I will never forget it, how J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards were talking. They were excited about you know being more involved in the passing game that year. Now, who knows how much it would have actually happened under Greg Roman, but it was, a, it was a point. It was an emphasis that they made, that the coaching staff made, but we never saw it because of what happened injury-wise for both of them. 2022, they never really got involved. They just, they just haven't really gotten involved in that game, but we, we've seen Gus Edwards catch passes 20 yards on the field, stiff arm guys right after. J.K. Dobbins has that in his arsenal too. So touches for them aren't just going to come on handoffs. They're also going to come on dump offs on, on short routes. They're going to be able to make some bread and butter that way too. And I'm excited to see 
how they're fully utilizing this offense by Todd Munkin. But I, my prediction, at least my early prediction, is that we're going to see Gus Edwards be used maybe a, a little less, but maybe not as less as some, not not as little as some people think. Because I think some of Lamar Jackson's carries will go to Gus Edwards, but then some of Gus Edwards' carries will go to J.K. Dobbins. So th- this I think will move more into J.K. Dobbins and his backfield with Gus, with Gus Edwards still being a big part of it because I think both those guys deserve to have big roles on this offense. But coming up in the final part of the show, defensive line will move over to defense, talk a bit about where they stand right now, where Baltimore stands in that room. So be sure to stay tuned. Still plenty to get to on Locked On Ravens. We're back here. Our final segment of Locked On Ravens here on Monday. Kevin Allstriker still here, taking you through the home stretch of today's episode on the show. And thank you so much for being here. Again, making us your first listen each and every day. We just hit 4,000 subscribers on YouTube uh, about a month or so ago. And a couple Fridays ago, it was our 1,000th episode here, at least my 1,000th episode. And that dates back all the way to when we were audio only. So those audio only listeners, or if you're listening in audio form today, thank you so much for doing so. If you're here in video form on YouTube, thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe again, both audio and video form. It is free any way you slice it. And whether you're listening on your way to work, on your way from work, it really means a lot to me and all the support I've gotten here. But let's get back into the content, talking Ravens defensive line. You know, we, we spent so much time on the offense over these first couple of segments. I want to switch it up, talk a bit about the defensive line. Now, defensive line is a position I've been talking about for a while here. It's one that I'm really intrigued to see what happens because we, we can talk about the future all we want to. It's going to be a huge need for them over the next couple of seasons because they really don't have a lot of guys, a lot of solid contributors under contract after this year. Long story short, what happened in the offseason for them was they ended up having to release Calais Campbell. He signs with the Atlanta Falcons. Campbell's a big loss anyway. You slice it. I'm not going to sugarcoat that in any way, shape, or form. I think this year, though, the Ravens have – they have enough. It's definitely teetering. I know some people really want them to add another defensive lineman, like a proven quality guy. But just going through their top guys right now, it's going to run through, you know, talk about veterans like Michael Pierce, who – played really well for them over the first couple of games for unfortunately getting injured and having to miss the year last year in 2022. Brent Urban is someone who can provide you really quality snaps, not necessarily a guy who's going to play hundred percent of them, but in, in a situational role can play inside and out. If you really need him to, he's somebody who I actually really like and have liked even dating back to his first stint with the Ravens. Seems like all those years ago, it wasn't really that long ago, but he's back in Baltimore. This is his second straight year in a Ravens uniform. Then you have the young guys, and the young guys are going to be the ones who I think need to really make an impact this year. Justin Metabike, Roderick Washington, Travis Jones. Those, those are your top five guys. Then, then you have a couple of undrafted players as well. You have Rayshad Nichols in there who stepped up a little bit for Baltimore. They signed Angelo Blackson as well, former Chicago Bears defensive lineman, so he's now with the team. But the top five is where I want to focus right now. Because they're going to be the guys who have to pick up the slack. Now, obviously, Campbell was not all the Ravens' production last year. He's a big loss, but it's not like he's this insurmountable player because they have no one else. They have quality guys there. But again, first, for the future, which is not really the point of the segment, for the future, the only guy they have under contract for next year, essentially, is Travis Jones. Justin Matabike and Brazil Washington, both free agents. And we'll see if the Ravens resign those guys. Brian Urban and Frazier as well. Michael Pierce is, you know, maybe could retire. I know he's hinted that this is his last contract. We'll see what ends up happening with him. But I think that the Ravens have to maximize this year with these guys. Now, I'm really excited personally for Justin Matabike and, and Broderick Washington, two players who were in that 2020 draft class. And th- honestly, that 2020 draft class has turned out. I know it was shaky early on, I think, for some people. Obviously, Patrick Queen had a up and down first couple of seasons before really turning it on last year. And then J.K. Dobbins with the injury, although he's been great when he's been on the field. Justin Matty B. Game, Broderick Washington, two players who I think have steadily grown over the course of their careers. And I think Broderick Washington is someone, look, I will admit it, and for those who listen, you know, I wasn't super high on the Broderick Washington selection when it happened. He's proven me wrong, and I'm really happy he did. I'm rooting for every single guy the Ravens take here, you know, Roger Washington was someone I was a little skeptical. I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know. And to be, I didn't know too much about him. So when when I looked a little bit more, I saw the potential into you know this guy could be a solid contributor one day for this team. He's really, really good. <laughs> like he's gonna get a really. I don't think he stays past this year for Baltimore. Maybe he does because the Ravens will you know have to restructure that room. But I think that Washington's someone who's gonna have such a big role for them. He's turned into one of my favorite guys in that entire defensive line room. So. 
I'm excited for his continued growth. Really solid force against the run. And also has a couple of pass rush moves in that arsenal. Justin Adebike is someone, though, who I'm expecting a, a leap from. He's been, he's been my break, breakout player pick for two years now. I'm not going to pick him again this year. But he's someone that I think with increased sack production, I think that's an area we have to see a, a bit better out of him. Now, sacks don't tell the whole story. You know, you, you can't look at a player and just look at sacks and say, well, that, that's what it is. I always go back to Yannick Ngakwe and his time in Baltimore. Didn't work out very well. <laughs> not, not saying it did. But there were all those plays, and for those who are listening, if, if you remember, where he was just a, a fingernail away, a hair away. I talked about it so many times on the show when he was on the team, where it just felt like he was getting so unlucky. It, to an extent, Adafi Ole had this problem last year where he was it was less than Ngakwe because I felt like Ngakwe had happened like multiple times a game. And then you look at his time back in Baltimore is his half a year there. And it was just the production was not there whatsoever, but it felt like he was so close. And again, you don't get points for almost in, in the NFL, right? You know, you, it's not what happens, but pressures were there to an extent. Same thing with OA last year. And for Ngakwe, it didn't work out. Hopefully for OA, it does. But I just, I need to see a lot out of that room in the defensive buying room this year. There, there's just so much that rides on them. Now that they're the only part of the defense and, you know, it's going to, they're going to be the group that makes or breaks them. I don't, I don't think that's what it's going to be whatsoever. But to me, those top five guys are solid enough. You know, no, no star power in that room necessarily right now. Maybe some of those guys could turn into stars. Travis Jones is someone who I think is going to have a much bigger role. We saw what he could do in the preseason last year. And obviously and that's the preseason. You can't put too much stock into it. But I think with an increased role, he could play really well this year. Not, not going to get, I think, a ton, a ton of snaps, but he's going to definitely get more than he got last year. So that's another player. Those guys are going to be really important. Maybe the Ravens go out there and add somebody else. I, I wouldn't, unless there are injuries in that room, I wouldn't necessarily count on it right now. I think you can definitely get away with having a group, a top five of Pierce, Urban, Matabike, Washington, and Jones. It's not going to be, again, not going to blow you away name-wise. You know, no, no Clayus Campbell type name on that team anymore. Campbell is a loss both on and off the field for them. But it's about, you know, opportunities for others to step up. You can't keep everybody. And unfortunately, the Ravens could not keep Campbell. So at the end of the day, for this Ravens team, they're going to have a lot on their plate, you know, multiple positional groups needing to step up in a big way. This is what we're going to see what these guys are made of. Justin Matabike brought to Washington, huge contract years for those guys. Travis Jones, a big second year as well. And then the veterans, they, they know what they need to do. Michael Pierce and Brent Urban there. So I think that maybe... They could add a guy, but Tavius Robinson can kick inside if they need him to. I wouldn't necessarily put too much on him right now. The luxury of having a Jason Pierre-Paul, for example, or, or Jadavian Clowney, some of those bigger outside linebackers, bigger edge guys, is you can kick them inside, as we saw with Jason Pierre-Paul last year. Jadavian Clowney has played both defensive end and outside linebacker. So maybe if they want versatility, they do still need another edge, in my opinion. Maybe that's what they do, and then they can kick a guy inside if they really need it. But for the five guys on the roster right now, at least the five guys, the top five for them, I think it's solid for them. Not the best positional group in the league, not the best positional group on the Ravens roster, but solid enough to where I think they can get the job done, especially if some of those younger guys take a leap. But that's all I have you here today on Locked on Ravens. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm going to get back here tomorrow. More Ravens content, of course. I'll be sure to stay tuned for that. I'll see you right back here tomorrow on Locked on Ravens.